Our research is designed for the, for the primary goal of having an impact in improving the lives of AIDS affected teenagers in Africa. So that, that's what drives us. I was uh, originally a chemist and I discovered genetics after reading a paper in the early 1980s and it was clear that genetics was going to make a big change to our interpretation, our ability to look at human d disease and that's when I joined and then I met a DMD patient and I realised that potentially we could identify what was wrong in these patients and perhaps in the future, that's 30 years ago, we might be able to develop a treatment. So it's the patient groups and the patients themselves that made me realise that we might be able to do something. So I was inspired to, to join the whole area of science and engineering, probably by my uh, late father. Uh, when I was a child, my uh, father built a hydroelectric scheme on the river running by our house, so we lived in the, in the countryside. So growing up, we had sort of our own electricity, and there were lots of issues around regulating the electricity and uh, our own electricity supply, frying some of the LED components in, in some of our fridges and, and other uh, appliances. So there was always sort of, a, I guess, a, a background in engineering in, in the house. And I also have two older brothers in electronic engineering, so uh, I think they guided me towards the area. Our team work on trying to look into poverty in a different way. From the very beginning, our goal was to do research that would move policy, talking with people who might use the research, trying to understand what were the problems, what are the timing, what would be the low-hanging fruit where we could really get a methodology. So when I was at school, the thing that I liked most about science was that it explains things around us. So if you look outside or if you're in the lab, whether it's something natural or not natural, I love that science gives you a reason for things. Um, and then that really, I ended up going more towards engineering as an application of that. All of us want to make some impact. All of us want to make some difference to change something. Otherwise, why would you be an academic? And so the question is, do you want to make a difference and how are you going to make a difference? And one of the ways is to go out and talk to people and say, look, this is what I've done, this is why it's interesting, and this is why it should change things. Science is uh, a huge world. I mean, there's many, many, many questions to be answered. So you could imagine it as an infinite number of pieces in a puzzle. I really hope that I am part of the next breakthrough in engineering that helps us um, build more intelligent equipment or stuff that's going to affect people's daily lives and make it better. I hope that my work will achieve a better outcome for cancer patients. Basically, it's trying to understand um, life and make it better. We make our best successes from failure first and the passion is what picks us back up again and makes us try again. My advice for kids that enjoy science is keep enjoying science. Find opportunities to keep playing with science. So if you really enjoy science, do it because you've got to have a, a life of fulfillment. You might not be very rich, but you cannot, you cannot pay for happiness. I'm Anne Prentice. This is a picture of Elsie Widdison sitting, as you can see, in the springtime with the daffodils in her home at Barrington. She was very interested in chemistry and the chemistry of foods. So one of the, their first major achievements and breakthroughs for the nutrition science world was the analysis of many, many different foods in order to compile what has now become McCants and Widdison's composition of foods. Almost every significant medical advance in the past 60 years has been tested and evaluated using randomized controlled clinical trials. Today, thousands of trials are in progress worldwide with possibly millions of volunteers. And now this powerful tool is also being used in Africa. For the last Four or five years it's been now, we, we've been working on a study called AIMS and AIMS stands for Autism Imaging Multicenter Study and the aim of AIMS is, is simply to look at structural brain abnormalities in the brain in autism. Cancer of the esophagus is an um, increasing problem 
in the Western world and in the UK in particular, and it's increased quite rapidly over the last 30 years. And the sad thing about this cancer is it usually presents at a late stage. So the first thing the patient usually knows about it is they've got swallowing difficulties and weight loss, and at that point it's incurable. Typically, in the context of mental health, it's been a very disempowered group, and people haven't necessarily been given the choice about how they receive health care. And what's exciting is that we will be able, in the near future, to give people that choice and that option. And that is really important um, in the context of psychosis, but in the context of mental health more broadly. Any day when I come in, there's usually some sort of problem I'm in the middle of sort of fighting my way through and there's a real satisfaction to solving that in a way that not just produces something physical at the end of the day that I can present as my own work, but in my particular area of expertise that this is something that will help, you know, health and medical science, so very satisfying for that. I've been really lucky throughout my career to be supported by a whole wide range of people who've been really encouraging, egging me on to do things that perhaps I wouldn't have done. When I look back on it now, it's really interesting to reflect on the environment that I was working in because it was far from diverse. Gender balance was really very poor. But this is changing and it needs to change faster and that's why support and diversity really matters.